Jesus is walking in here with you. And let's just get our hearts ready to meet with him here today. Thank you. 
morning, CCW. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. What a beautiful song. My name is Mike Shear, and I help with uh, men's ministry here. And uh, if you're wondering why you're here and why we're here, this song really said it well. It's all for Jesus. We're here to worship him, to tell others about him, and just to enjoy his presence. Man. I, I could listen to that song all day. Uh, it's wonderful. So, hey, we're glad that you're here. And if you're looking for ways to get involved, we have a couple of things for you. We have the Volunteers Banquet, which is on November 17th. So if you have helped out in any way here at CCW this past year, we invite you to join us at 6 p.m. on November 17th. Uh, please RSVP. You can do that out there. Uh, in the Connect area, you can also do it online. So please make sure that you do that. There's a QR code as well, and you can scan that so you can sign up for that. It's, it was really good last year. I feel like we had a couple people come up here and they were wearing like lion ears and tails, and it was, <laughs> right, Kenny? Do you remember that? Yeah, you do. All right, so it is going to be a good time. Make sure that you sign up for that. Baptism is coming up on Sunday, November 19th. And what an amazing opportunity for you as a Christ follower if you uh, feel led to make known to the world that you are a Jesus follower. I highly recommend that you speak to someone today, get signed up to do that. That is Sunday, November 19th, right here. We'll do the baptism. We love baptism. We love people that are proclaiming their faith in Jesus and we party. It is a good time, so I'd really encourage you to do that. Hey, and last but not least today, Trunk or Treat uh, here at the church. We are going to be doing that from 4 to 6, and make sure you invite your friends, kids, come along, and just, just have a good, safe time, and just do some fellowship. Um, we also have an opportunity for you to pack a shoebox. Collection day is November 12th. So make sure that you do that. There's a lot of people that are um, not as privileged as we are. And this gives us an opportunity to share our wealth and our love to them. And they get to um, hear about Jesus through that. So we are here because community is important. In fact, God made us for community. So I'm so glad you're here. I pray that um, throughout this morning, through the songs, through getting coffee, chatting, whatever it is, through the message that you really connect with Jesus. So I'm going to pray that way, all right? Would you pray with me? Father, we are so grateful for you. If not for you, we wouldn't be here. Lord Jesus, we want to exalt your name. We want to lift you up. We want to feel your presence. I ask, Father, that you'd open our hearts, our minds, our souls to what you have to say. Lord, you choose how you do it. Maybe it's a hug or a handshake. Maybe it's the message. Lord, just touch our hearts. And again, Lord Jesus, it's all for you that we do this. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, like I said, it's so good for you guys to be here, for us to be here with you. So it's time to stand and sing to our God. And I think one of the best things you can say to someone, <clears throat> excuse me, is that I believe in you. And how much more to say that to our King Jesus, that he is what he says he is, and that he can do what he says he can do. All right, here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Jesus Christ How could I ever walk away From the one who saved my life Oh, I'll never be ashamed Of the gospel of Jesus Christ How could I ever walk away From the one who saved my life No, I'll never be ashamed Of the gospel of Jesus Christ
Jesus, you are peace. We come to you today wanting so much to feel your presence, to know without a doubt that you are here. You've proven your love to us by giving your life and proven your presence by giving us your spirit. And I just pray that we would let everything else go and just look to you, um, that we believe in you and that we live by faith, not by sight. And I pray that we would just see you here more clearly today in our hearts, our minds, just everything, as we are here for you. God, we pray this all in your name. Amen. All right. Well, it was really awesome worshiping with you. If you could just turn and say hello to your neighbor and then have a seat. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. 
Thank you, Ben. Thank you for everybody that volunteers and, and works and um, gets coffee flowing, all that kind of stuff today. Appreciate all of that. If this is your first time checking out CCW, maybe it's your first time online, we want you to just relax and sit back and just take in and just be open for whatever God has for you. If you're not yet a Jesus follower, we get it. We hope that today you'll get some of your questions answered. If not, you can always track us down, shoot us a note, meet our elders, whatever you need, we would, be, we would love to help you take that next step in your life. Uh, if you want to use the Bible app, you can do that. In the bottom right-hand corner is the word more, and look at events, and all of our information will be there today. So this is week four out of eight of our Y series, and we're asking these questions that I, I believe that so many people us included, inside the church, outside the church, ask. And today, our question is, why don't I always feel God? And I think sometimes in this, there's this pressure. Somebody's like, oh, I felt God this way. And you're sitting there like, yeah, I've never felt God like that. And, and so there's a whole bunch of questions that come into this about feeling God. And, and so I wrote down a, a few questions of my own about this. How do you feel God? I mean, what does it feel like? Is it a warm, fuzzy is it the same fuzzy feeling you sit down every time you sit next to your beautiful wife? Like, ooh, I'm tingling. I, 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 is it like that? I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, what's required? I mean, is, it, is, is music required? Does it happen every day? I mean, do you have to dress up for it? Do you have to come to church to feel God? Or, or is an organ needed? And I hope not because I hate the sound of organs. <laughs> I told my wife, if you play an organ at my funeral, I'm coming back to haunt you. <laughs> I, I told that, that, that I tell my wife that to a couple of guys I meet with regularly. And this is what they said to me. Oh, we're going to get a cat to play the organ at your funeral. <laughs> I really hope that Jesus gets a hold of Mike Shear and Kenny Miller's life today. They can be nicer to me. So uh, what is it? I mean, how do you feel, God, and what does it feel like? And is it always like everybody else? Is it exactly the same? We're going to try to walk through some of those things. Uh, but we're going to start in the Old Testament today. i got a bunch of scripture we're going to go through. Uh, back in the Old Testament, we're going to start with a prophet named uh, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, he is known as the weeping prophet. He was depressed a lot. He was down. And one of the reasons that Jeremiah was so down and depressed is because God gave him the task of going to the Israelites and warning them and saying, listen, if you don't stop with the idol worship, the Israelites have been worshiping idols for centuries. God sent prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet. He sent warning after warning after warning. If you don't believe me, read the Bible for yourself. And then Jeremiah is like, look, if you don't stop, God is telling you, you're going to be taken into captivity because you've abandoned God. So I'm giving you warning after warning. And so Jeremiah is like expressing this thing. And so sure enough, that's exactly what happens. Babylon comes in, takes him captive. And so Jeremiah has a different message because all of a sudden in captivity, the Israelites started to turn their heart back to God. That's true for me. When everything's great in my life, like, oh, I just, this is good. But then when things are bad, I'm like, oh, God, where are you? And I need you. And all. It, So this is what's happening in the life of the Israelites. They're in captivity. They're starting to turn their heart back. And, and I want to say this. If you feel really far away from God, God is really good at always making a way back. So Jeremiah, we're going to pick it up in, in chapter 29. After centuries of warnings, they're in captivity. Now they're turning back. Jeremiah 29, verse 10. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I, had, I promised. I will bring you home again. Now, sometimes it, this feels a little tough. It's like, good grief. I mean, that's, God says those are my people. And they went into captivity for so, wow, woo, it's tough. And the, but it sets up this, there's a way back to God. There, it sets up this, God can't partner with sin, but when we repent, when we turn back to God, God will bring us in, and, and he loves us. And, and so this is what we're seeing, the heart is turning, and we love to claim this verse. So if you feel very far away from God today, this next verse that we claim all the time for our lives, it is set up to a people or given to a people that were way far away from God. I think this verse applies to those kinds of people, and I think it applies to people who are tight with God. Here's the verse. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. 
They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. If you love that verse, just say, I love that. that. Yeah, me too. So it doesn't really matter if I'm in captivity because of my stupidity or if I am really tight with God. God has a good plan for me. And I'm claiming this, and it's for my good. It's for my benefit. So I'm grabbing onto that. When we love that verse, but I don't want us to miss that it was spoken to a people far away from God. And God always makes a way back. How many times do we pull away from God? How many times do we let our heart go somewhere else and we just chase whatever our heart's desire is and God is like, hey, 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 remember me? Come here, come here, come here, come here. I love this. What we truly need to do is to keep our hearts connected to God. This next verse in this context, it, it, sh- it, it sheds light on all of this, uh, uh, where our hearts are in a direction and our focus. Jeremiah 29, verses 12 and 13. This is from NLT, and I'm also going to read it from NIV. In those days when you pray, turning your heart back, Learn it back. I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, what does it say? You'll find me. Wholehearted, not a little piece. Wholeheartedly, you'll find me. This is NIV the way it says. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your Heart. The key in feeling God, the key to have any kind of experience is to get your heart connected. And it has to be not a peace. It has to be a wholehearted thing. It has to be an earnestness. There has to be sincerity. There has to be all your heart. And when you do that, God does show up and you will find him. But let me talk about some reasons that, that are obvious that, that we need to think about. And I, I hope I inspire you, encourage you today, but I want you to think about how you live your life. And is your heart wholehearted? I want to talk about four reasons why we will never feel God. Things that get in the way for us to feel God. Number one is this. We don't feel God because we're not talking to him. We're not praying. I don't care what relationship you're in. Try that with a person you care about. You deliberately put in distance and you don't talk to them for however long. What is going to happen to that relationship? You are going to make it cold because you put distance there. Whether it's intentional or deliberate, it doesn't really matter to me. If there's long times apart, no communication, no listening, no talking, pretty soon that relationship goes cold. What happens to the fuzzy feelings? I don't care if it's the person you relate or married to. If you stop talking, what happens? The feelings start to go cold. It's just obvious. So how often do we pray? Do you stop praying? Is your amen, goodbye, good riddance, I'll, I'll be back when I need you? Or is your, pray, is your amen, I'm like, okay, uh, until I talk to you again? There are times in my life, I'm going to be honest, I don't want anybody to put me on a pedestal, and I don't want to put myself there. There are times, and I work at this church every day, there are times that I come here, and the message from God to me is, you're not praying enough. You're, you're relying on Dave way, way too much. And I need to pray more. And there are times. And so if that's something you would love to join us, every Wednesday at noon, we are praying in this room. And so if you want to join us, come join us. But it's just a quiet, no service, just us and God time. And so this is what the text says in First Thessalonians 5. Apostle Paul wrote this. Never stop praying. So when you say your amen, it's just kind of like, okay, I'll talk to you again when I get a chance. It, it's just a continuing conversation. You're in tune with God. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Don't worry about anything. How do you stop worrying? Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want things to, have, to be peaceful in life? Who doesn't want to sleep a sleep of innocence at night? Just like, okay, everything's good. Woohoo! Good night, God. Uh, who doesn't want that? And so then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I don't understand in my life. There's a lot of stuff I don't understand in this world. I'm just like, what is, oh my God, are you kidding? Okay, God, I, I, can I buy a vowel? I'm not getting this. And he can give us peace that passes our understanding. But you have to turn your heart. You have to talk to him to do that. Stop worrying. Hebrews 4, verses 14 through 16. So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do. He identifies with us, and he sees us. 
yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it. If you're not talking to God, if you're not praying, you're not going to feel his presence. You're not going to feel God because you're putting distance there. Second reason. The second reason we don't feel God is we're not listening. Anybody ever told you that? You're not listening. My parents told me that all the time. You're not listening. What would you say? You're not listening. And I, there's tons of people. It's like, yeah, well, I don't really need to listen. Everything's okay. Well, so years ago, I did a Valentine's banquet. And um, so I'm in the middle of the talk. And in the middle of the talk, I, ADD kicked in or something. And I'm just like, there's this couple here that on that day, they were celebrating their 48th wedding anniversary. And so I stopped and I looked at him and said, hey, what is the secret to a long, happy marriage. Today's your 48th anniversary. And he said this, <laughs> years ago, I learned what ticked her off. <laughs> and everybody starts laughing. And then when they stopped laughing, he said this, and I stopped doing those things. And I'm like, there it is. But my point on this is he's listening to his spouse and whatever was causing the bumps or all of that stuff, he's like, oh, Okay, um, I'm not going to, he's listening and he's adjusting and he's changing his life and, and actually that, that made it happy. God put tremendous effort into giving us the Bible. Tremendous effort. And he puts truth in there that he wants for us to learn and know. I can't tell you how many people have come to me, hey Dave, can you tell me what God's will is for my life? I'm like, are you not reading your Bible? Because there are lots of passages in there that say, do this because this is God's will for you. And, and I want to give you one. I'm going to give you an example. Right after the verse that says, never stop praying, we get this verse. This is 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Be thankful in all circumstances. I hate this verse. Because I'm not thankful in all circumstances. And there are times that I just want to whine. And you know when I hit my thumb with a hammer? I do not say, oh. God, I'm so thankful for this circumstance. I did not like the pink color of my thumbnail. I, purple is beautiful. Thank you. But it says be thankful in all circumstances. And then we get this. For this is, what's it say? This is God's will for you. So stop whining. Stop doing all that. Be thankful in all, not for all circumstances, but in all circumstances, this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Back to the, I got to be in the word thing. King David wrote this, Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to, to guide my feet and a light for my path. You know, I don't know how many times I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and I don't turn the lights on and my toes are like, oh, not again. <laughs> right? When you have light to guide you, it's when you have guidance, I mean, it's good. And so I'm one of those guys, when I get something I have to put together, I do follow the instructions because I hate getting done. And I have 15 pieces left over and I'm like, yeah, I don't know what it's for. I look at the instructions. God gave us his word for instructions to guide us. Number three, the third reason we don't feel God is we're too spooky. Let me explain this one. I don't have a verse for this one. It's just my opinion. We're too spooky. I'll, I'll explain it. it it's, it. It's when we live life and everything's a sign. God, give me a sign. Give me a sign. Give me a sign. You want me to stop dating this boy? Make an elephant walk in my room right now. <laughs> you know, we, we, get, we get this spooky thing. It, it's almost like when you're out for a walk and the wind blows and a tree branch falls. We're like, I get it, God. You want me to branch out and make more friends. I get it. That, that, I, I'm not saying that God doesn't use signs, but when we make everything a sign, it gets so confusing. And so what is God, what is not? Back when I was in college, uh, I had a friend that was praying with some guys in a dorm. And in the middle of the prayer, one of the guys took his glasses off, smashed them on the floor, and he says, God told me to do that. Except the next day, he's walking around campus with tape all over his glasses. And I'm like, what was that? I'm not saying that God doesn't ever use signs. I think he can do whatever he wants to do. But I think when we get all spooky, we, we are going to miss God. And, and it's like, oh, is this guy? I don't, know. Just don't make it spooky. If God wants you to do something, you're going to know it. You're not going to be able to escape it. If you don't believe me, just ask that guy named Jonah. Right? You're going to know. You just 
God gives you this peace and it's like, okay, okay. And, and the doors open in front of you and you step through them. And if the door closes, you look out the window. Okay, God, what else do you want? And, and you keep going, but not everything is super spooky. Okay, the next one, my daughter's going to help me. Um, hopefully she's ready to roll and not all. My daughter's, here, here we go. What is this? What is this? Winter's coming. I don't want to feel the cold. Winter's coming and you don't, well, okay, then let me help you. Okay, just come here, come here step forward. I'm not going to throw you off the stage yet. Okay, so if winter's coming, I don't want you to feel it either. Uh, well, you know what? Hang on. You can see it, but I don't want you to feel it. All right, there you go. You look like Ralphie's little brother. <laughs> All right, so there you go. Now, let me give you the fourth reason why we don't feel God. Just stand here. Hang, hang, hang. I want, you to, I want everybody to see it. Hang on. Hang on. The fourth reason that we don't feel God is because we cover ourselves to where we can't feel God. We cover ourselves with our sin. So we don't feel anything just like winter. Okay, thank you. You can go take all that hot stuff off. Thank you very much, Ralphie's little brother. We cover ourselves. We cover and cover and cover. Now, th this is a text I want to throw out, and then we're going to unpack this a little bit. Psalm 66, 18, if I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened to me. I'm not talking about the oopsie sins. We do those all the time. It's like, oops, oh man, God, take care of this. I am talking about when we intentionally do the things we know that are wrong. When we do this, this, I know it's sinful. I don't care. I'll deal with the consequences when they come. I'm doing this because this is what I want. And, and we deliberately choose to go against God and it's intentional sin. This is what Jesus said about people like that. From Jesus' own mouth, Matthew 13, verse 14 and 15. You will ever be hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Again, it's like any relationship. When you intentionally, I'm talking deliberately, do something against the person you love, what is going to happen? They're going to react. There's going to be distance, and it needs to get fixed. And if you're covering yourself with sin, you're not going to feel God. So what are the steps back? The first thing that has to happen when you deliberately do something is, is you need to confess it. That's naming it. That's acknowledging it. That's saying, I am sorry I did that. The second step in getting a relationship back is repentance. That's changing the way you think. It's saying, I, I recognize I did this. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it again. That's repentance. It's the change. And the next step is asking for forgiveness. Forgiveness is the release. It's saying, I'm so sorry. I don't want to do this again. Would you forgive me and release the offense? It's asking for the release. There's one more step. You got to live right. You got to say, I'm not going to do this again, and then not do it again. So you have to follow Jesus in the way you live. This is what's required to restore any relationship is confession, repentance, forgiveness, and, and then following Jesus, living right. It's the true truth with God. It's the truth with anybody else. So if you're covering yourself with sin and you're putting distance with God, you are not going to feel him. You've broken the fellowship. Okay, let's talk about feeling God. Let's talk about what that looks like. Um, Jeremiah 29, 12, and 13, and then we're going to bring in Hebrews 11. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who, what's the last three words? Sincerely seek him. Sincerely, wholeheartedly, earnestly. I mean, we've got to do this all the time. Just, just go, 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 just pursuing God. And when you do, you're going to find him. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you that, that feeling God is not. Feeling God is not a formula. It is not a, okay, I'm going to do A to Z. This is what I got to do. Okay, God, I want to feel you now. It's not a formula. If it were a formula, then faith is not required. 
If everything were science, if everything was a formula, then we don't need faith. And God is like, he just said, without faith, it's impossible to please me. You have to have faith. You have to have a, a belief system. You have to believe in me wholeheartedly, earnestly, sincerely. Seek me and you will find me. And I can tell you sometimes the reason I don't feel God is because I'm not looking for him. You know how in the Old Testament, Lamentation says God's mercies are new every morning? Do you know how come you don't find God's mercy sometimes? You're not looking for him. That's gu- I'm guilty of this. Like, okay, oh, and the earnestly, the, the, is, is it here? I'm looking, I'm looking. Something else I want to tell you, <clears throat> and, and I want to speak for our entire staff. How can I tell you, uh, or how can I speak for the entire staff? It's because I've asked them this question. We spent time this week talking about when's the last time you felt God? When's the last time you were in awe of God? What did it look like? What did it feel like? How often does it happen? And I can speak for all of our staff that, to say that it is not an everyday thing. It's not even every Sunday thing. It's not like as soon as Trish comes out here and the music starts, like, oh, I feel something. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I'm telling you it doesn't happen all the time. What I'm saying is that when you seek God and you do this sincerely and earnestly, God can catch you at various times and in various ways. And it's not always going to be the same for each, each other. God is big enough to give you your own experience with him. So relax about not feeling like something else. Let me give you a couple examples of, of how this has happened for me. Um, several years ago, Back in the day, I used to speak at Lake King Camp every summer, and, and I don't remember what summer this was. It was a while ago. And I remember speaking to junior campers, which is fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And I hate calling people down from the stage when I'm, when I'm preaching. I hate doing that. And, and I rarely ever do it. I did it one time because a guy was snoring in the front row, almost falling in the aisle. And I'm like, somebody please wake him up before he falls. Um, that's about the only time I've done that. But this time at camp, there was a, a young boy, would not listen, kept chirping and yakking and blah, 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 disruptive every time I spoke. And I, I said to him, I stopped talking, and I looked at him and said, if you don't knock it off, I'm going to make you go sit back in the back with the junior camp director. That's all I said, but that's what I said. So I, I'm going through this talk, whatever. I get done. And there was some, one of my friends was there and I was walking back to where I was staying. I got about 200 yards from the chapel and I froze. And God came on me like a ton of bricks. And this was the message that that I got loud and clear. It was a, who do you think you are? You are not the savior of these campers. And then this was the, the one that hurt me, but it was true. The, the message from God was, how many times have you prayed for that boy? How, your, your talk was more important than that boy. And I am telling you, I started crying and, and I was broken. And that moment, I prayed out to God for that young boy's life. And I prayed for him throughout the rest of the camp week. And I'm so grateful to have a little piece of this. A couple talks later, he put his faith in Jesus. And I was there. If I was such a jerk and if I never, if I never softened my heart toward him, I don't think I would have known. And he probably wouldn't have connected to me. By the end of camp, I found out his home life was horrible. They didn't go to church, all of this stuff going on. And it just, he was a wreck. And then he puts his faith in Jesus. And then Saturday, I always go out where all the buses are. And I'm saying goodbye to people, whatever. And, and you know, people come up and they want to talk. This boy was following me around like a lost puppy. And just crying. He did not want to go home. And so I, I'm hugging this boy. And, and I'm so grateful God gave me that moment. But I was so hard-headed, hard-hearted. Like, I, I, who, do I, who am I? I, I just, my talk was more important than him. And God was like, ah, I've never forgotten that. Another time that God came upon me and I, I was in awe was moving here. A lot of confusing things were going on. We hadn't sold our house. I had never heard of the community church of Waterford. 
And I'm just like, okay, I'm, no, no connections there. And my dad was dying. He was in hospice. And so I'm like, oh, I, I, I'm telling you, I know God called me here. And there was this peace that came over me. I, was, I just knew. I knew I was supposed to appear. We got here April 2019. My dad died June 2019. But I'm telling you, I, I still had peace over all of it. And I just knew. There have been a few other times in my life where I was just in awe. You earnestly seek him and you will find him. It's not going to be like everybody else. So asking the staff this question, this is something that Christian shared with me, and I'm sharing this with his permission. Um, last week I was picking on about his skinny jeans, which I will always do. Um, but this week he, he was talking about one of the times that God came upon him and he was in awe. And he was a younger man and communion. And he had communion several times, but this particular communion, it, it rested on him of all that God really did for Christian. And he was in awe of, this, this is unbelievable. And, and God communicated to him, and, and he felt in God's presence at that moment. So what about all those questions at the beginning of the talk of, do I got to do this, do I got to do that, and do I have to be in church, and is it communion related? It, it, is it like everybody else's and all that kind of stuff? And, and, and how do you feel, God? Do you have to be in church? You got to dress up for it. I mean, what, what is it? Um, is music required? This is what I'm going to tell you. I believe you can feel God in church, at home, at work, in school, outdoors. You can feel God laying in your bed in your PJs. I think God can come upon us anytime he chooses. And he can just say, hey, here I am. Remember, you're looking for me. Here I am. I got something for you. Hey, hey, hey. it's going to be okay. I got this. I got this. Before we wrap this up, I want to encourage you with something. We can put this on the screen. Just because you don't feel God does not mean he's absent. Just because you don't, I mean, if you go with your feelings all the time, you know what? Half of us be in jail if we went with all of our feelings all our life. You, you have to lead your feelings. And that's why God tells us you have to seek me with all your heart. Earnestly, you, you have to chase this and, and go after this. And just because you don't feel God doesn't mean he's absent. You can do everything right and still not feel God. And, and I want to give you a, an idea of a possibility. I want to encourage you. Maybe God is waiting on purpose. Maybe there's something that he is looking or designing or creating specifically for you. And God is simply doing this. He's drawing you closer. Come on. Come here. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. I, I know it's hard. Come, I got you. I see you. Come on. Come on. Come on. I got you. This is Acts chapter 17, verse 24 to 27. He is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples and human hands can't serve his needs for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything and he satisfies every need. From one man, he created all the nations through the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. Now check this out. His purpose, his purpose, his purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. The purpose God's purpose in creating all of this is for people to seek after him, for nations to seek after him. And so it is possible, it is quite possible that you're not feeling God because he's drawing you closer. It, it, it just, I got, I, hey, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He's waiting because he wants you to chase harder. Maybe he's waiting because we're not sincere enough. Maybe he's waiting because it's half-hearted seeking and not whole-hearted seeking. There could be all kinds of reasons why God is waiting. He wants us to earnestly, sincerely, wholeheartedly seek after him. And when he's ready, when you're ready, he'll show up. He may show off. It may be more of a quiet, peaceful thing of like, I'm going to be okay. I don't know how it's going to be. I'm not going to predict what God does and when he does it. I'm just saying he will show up when you sincerely, earnestly, wholeheartedly seek after him. And then you're going to be able to say, just like other people do for, I was in awe of God when? This is what took place. I'll say one more thing before I, I wrap this up. I can tell you personally, I mentioned it earlier, I seek after God a whole lot harder and a whole lot harder 
when things are not okay in my life. You know, when things are okay, I can get lazy in chasing God. I think probably a lot of people are just like me. It's like, everything's okay in my life. Oh, I just want it to stay this way. Just, okay, all right. I don't want to do, I don't want to change anything because it could mess up the balance of things being okay. Like, okay, all right. thank you, God. Whew. But then when things fall apart, and I usually <laughs> am in charge of things falling apart in my life, you know, I make a mountain out of molehill, and I'm like, okay, God, I, I need you. And I chase after God so much harder when things are not okay. So this is what I think. Sometimes God puts things in our path. God allows difficulties to come because we stopped seeking after him. And he's like, hey, remember me? Come here, come here, come here, come here. So chasing after God. When things don't feel okay, I do it a whole lot harder. Jeremiah 29, 12, and 13. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Hebrews eleven six. It's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. I want you to imagine just one thing with me as we, we put a ball on this thing. I want you to imagine this. Imagine the praises of God that you'll be able to share with your family and friends that because of your whole, you wholeheartedly, sincerely, and earnestly sought after God and you found him. And he found you. And you're going to be able to share that with other people. I'm like, oh, this is what was going on. I was bumping along, not bumping all that great. This was going bad. And all of a sudden, God did this for me. God, show, God showed off for me. I, I, I kind of feel like every sunset, every sunrise is kind of like God showing off a little bit. You know, maybe that's when you feel his presence. Maybe you feel his presence out on a fishing boat. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just when you're quiet, when, when you're seeking God. You're going to find him, and he will show up, and you will have a story to share. I have no idea what time it is because the clock is blinking noon. So, so I'm going to pray, and then we're going to sing a song. Father, Father, we love you, and there are times that we love you a little less because we get busy and distracted, and things get in the way, and sometimes it's not sinful things. It's just we get preoccupied. Help us, Father, to maybe have a little more quiet time, maybe turn the radio off in our vehicles, maybe wake up in the morning and just seek after you with our whole hearts. Help us to start our days like that. Just be in tune with you. And just say we want to see you and we want to follow you. And God, help us with our distractions. And if it's that we're not praying enough, help us to do better in that. If we're not in your word, help us to do better there. If we're making everything so spooky, help us to just be logical and, and just trust you in our faith. And if we are deliberately sinning, God, help us. May we feel your conviction. May we feel your direction. May we fix it. And God, I think every person in this room, every person watching online would say, I would love to feel the presence of God. So God, make yourself known. Make yourself real. Help us to remember that we are never alone. In your name I pray, amen. We are gonna sing this morning a song, um, Another in the Fire. And I don't know where you're at, how you're feeling, or, or any of that kind of stuff. But I know that God will take the journey of life with you. And I encourage you, I encourage all of us, let's seek after God. Let's sing Another in the Fire this morning.
Amen. Never alone. God's going with you. Just because you don't feel him doesn't mean he's absent. He's got you. And so I, I pray and hope when you walk out, you're going to feel a little bit better than you did when you got here. As a reminder that God is with you. If you can't leave that way, our elders will be over here in the corner if you need some help, hope, or healing, whatever it is. Maybe you have questions about stuff. Man, they'll take all of that. We, we believe so much in community here. It's in our name, community. So not only do I want you to feel that God is with you, I also want you to feel and know that you've got a family that supports you, a community here that supports you. So if you've got something going on, we would love to support you, pray for you, take care of you. Let's pray, and then we will be on our way this morning. Father, Father, thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for being patient with us. Sometimes we put pressure on you that it's not necessary. Sometimes we put pressure on you because we're desperate. God, you are so big and so good. You know our needs. You know what's going on. And you're right there available for us. And so I pray for every single person in the room, every person watching online. May they have a God moment soon. They see you, see you and they feel you, and, and you're so big. But Father, help us to earnestly, sincerely seek after you with all of our hearts. Help us to be focused on that. Just you, what do you want? What do you have? How do you want me to live? And if there's distance, I pray that distance is fixed today, that people draw back into your presence. So God, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for being willing to forgive our sins and take this journey of life with us. We can't thank you enough for all that you do. God, so thank you. I pray, Father, that you put a smile on your face as you watch us and how we live our lives. In your name I pray, amen. God bless you, everybody. Hey, Pastor Dave. Everyone just hang on for a second. Hi. Come it is 1232. It is. Come here. I'm going to ask uh, Lisa, Christian, and Kayla, Andrew, and Amanda to come up here. Can you? Come here. Don't be afraid. We're you're just one, giving room for other folks. You're come one of the here. ones that is going to play, have a cat play the organ Amen, at my funeral. Brother. Hey, as they are making their way up here, you may or you may not know but uh, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And so hopefully you saw that there were some baskets out there where you could write some notes to each one of these uh, fine folks and let them know how they've touched your life in one way or another. Um, I think they're still out there. So if you can, write them a note, give them uh, an email, a text, anything that is going to show your appreciation to them. So. I want to speak to you guys um, specifically. I know when I entered ministry, um, someone told me something that has stuck with me uh, throughout my whole life. And he said, your life is going to be like living in a fishbowl. And what that means is that whether you know it or not, and it was the same for me, everybody is watching. And I, I just want to say that I feel for you and I know that that is a difficult spot to be because they're watching you they're watching your wife your family your kids and sometimes people even Christians are not kind and I'm sorry but today I want you to know that we love you we appreciate you we see you and we know that giving your life to be ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ is not easy and we are just in awe of each one of you and what you do for us so we love you and we thank you how about if we give it up for these fine people so just one second here so meanwhile we have gifts for you guys there's Give cards and stuff in, in there, but there's also a very special gift for each one of you. So if you could, you could start with Dave. Pull, pull your gift out. <laughs> Go ahead, don't be afraid. So we figured you needed something to wear. Christmas is coming, and you need something to wear for your Christmas service. I don't trade with you. It's a cat. What? <clears throat> Yeah. 
Jeff, so we have a couple of things because Jeff wanted to add something special to your bag. So, so the first thing, that's a little flamingo for your room, but Jeff thought you needed another pair of skinny jeans. So. <laughs> And Andrew, I apologize. I thought it would be a lot bigger, the thing we got you would be a lot bigger than what it is. But you know, you're in Indiana now, it's time to switch sides. <clears throat> you can fly this. <laughs> you can fly that proudly in front of your home. <laughs> All right, um, let's give it up one more time for all of these. Thank you. Hey, before they, before they leave the stage, would you join me in prayer? Uh, we're gonna pray for them. Uh, again, this is not an easy task that they have, but I know they love it and I know they love you, so let's pray for them. Father, we are so thankful for all of these men and women their kiddos, I pray a great blessing on them. I pray for your protection. I pray that they would seek you with their whole hearts and Lord, that you would show up in a big way. Thank you so much for this day, for this place. And Lord, I just ask that you'd watch over each one of us as we go home, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, one last thing. Um, I happened to be spending some time with Jeff yesterday and uh, he mentioned something that tomorrow is Trish's birthday. So let's give it up for Trish and her birthday tomorrow. Hey, thank you so much. You're dismissed. Have a great day. I know this very well.